Tony, this looks very interesting. I'd like you to take a look at these chromosomes. I'd like to take a look at your chromosomes, baby. <laughs> what do you say we knock off this genetic research and go to my place for some dinner, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, Tony, is that all you ever think about? Are you too beautiful? Do you find that men refuse to take you seriously? Are a pretty face and a swell body keeping you from the meaningful relationship or important career you've been looking for? Well, right now, thousands of beautiful women like me are discovering that you don't have to be a sex object with a fabulous new treatment called Homelier You. Yes, for just five minutes a day in the privacy of your own bedroom, you can change from this to this. Hey, Tony, how about that drink? Hey, now you're talking to... Forget it. Let's, let's keep working, huh? Homelier You. You'll look like a dog, but you'll feel like a person. <laughs> Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. FCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Catherine O'Hara Dave Thomas And featuring Carol Ramos Television like you've never seen it before This is the FCTV Television Network We're here I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonbear. And this is the SCTV News Today. Well, it was a day for kilts and pipes today as the city welcomed one of the best known group of bagpipers in the world who are beginning a national concert tour. Most of these men are actually coal miners, and they hail from the coal country of southern Scotland and northern Wales. Here they are, the Queen's Black Lung Pipers. <laughs> And now here with SCTV's Consumer Complaint Action Line is Bess Furness. Thanks, Floyd. Our first consumer complaint comes from a landlord who writes, <laughs> Dear Consumer Complaint Action Line, I own a 16-unit apartment building, and lately I've been getting a lot of static from my tenants. It seems like they're always griping about something. No heat, broken plumbing, rent increases, <laughs> structural damages to the building. Bess, I'm fed up to here with it. What do they expect me to do about it? Now they're all refusing to pay their rent until I do something about the collapsed staircase. What can I do? Signed, Mr. X. Well, what Mr. X couldn't do, Consumer Complaint Action Line could. We sent four big thugs to the apartment building to threaten all the tenants and take all the cash they had on them. The tenants coughed up, Mr. X got his rent, and a little interest, too. I don't think he'll have to worry any more about rent strikes. Lloyd. A humanitarian note in the news today. Comedian Dick Gregory, famous for his long hunger strikes, has joined with SCTV star Johnny LaRue to protest the ongoing hostilities in the Middle East. Mr. LaRue made the following statement at a press conference earlier this morning. Uh, Dick Gregory and I have decided to eat continuously until there's lasting peace achieved in the Middle East. We've been at it for three days now, and uh, we're fixing the hospital, and he's doing all right. Unfortunately, you know, that uh, he went in there. Myself, I'm doing fine. And just remember to eat until there's peace in the Middle East. Johnny LaRue, a big, big man, Getting bigger all the time. We're proud of him. And now it's time for a once a week feature on SCTV News, News Views Letters. Now this is where we read letters from uh, you, our viewers, who objectively discuss the pros and cons of our program. Now let's start it off, all right, Earl? Thanks, Floyd. Our first letter tonight comes from Mrs. Emile Zola, who writes... My family and I have been avid watchers of SCTV News for many months now, primarily because of the objectivity, discretion, and damn good journalistic sense of Floyd Robertson. 
His magnetic personality and undying quest for the truth make him number one in my books. Three cheers for Floyd. Oh, that was nice. Quite complimentary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Mr. D.R. Halsey of Centerville. Uh, Mr. Halsey says, Dear Floyd, can't say enough about your fine news program, but one thing really bothers me. Surely you can come up with someone better than Earl Cannonbear. I can see how you might feel sorry for the guy, but you can only carry pity so far. Now, if it's a contract thing with Earl, I'm a lawyer, and maybe I can help you out. I'd even waive my usual fee if it would help get Earl off an otherwise fine news program. Earl? The president of SCTV Network, there are two sides of every coin, and this seems to be your approach to your network news team, because Earl Cannonbear comes up tails in presence, personality, <clears throat> and delivery. He is a slug. It says here he's a slug jamming the efficiency of your news machine, and until you get rid of that, uh, and then it goes on and on, uh, fumbling moron. Empty-headed, fumbling moron. Right. So, that's one letter. You finish it? No, I don't. Okay. Call you a slug. I hope you die of rabies. And now, SCTV presents a before-school special. Charles Perrault's cautionary tale for children everywhere, Beauty and the Beats. <laughs> This venison is scrumptious, Mother. You're not eating your beets. I don't like beets, Mother. I wish I did, but I don't. like a duke and he had the face of a raccoon. First he frightened you're not eating your beets. I don't like beets. I've tried to eat them but I can't. But I refused him. Wise child. I've heard tell of this rogue in his magic castle. You're not eating your beets? <laughs> I don't like beets. <laughs> into a dragon spouting flames. My dear, you haven't touched your broccoli. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
and welcome to Firing Squad. And tonight's subject for discussion is compulsory school busing. Uh, uh, intransigence of the egalitarian elite or symbiotic inevitability. And tonight's uh, guest is a member of uh, the Greenville Elementary School and a participant in the school busing program, uh, Mr. Jimmy Cunningham. Uh, Mr. Cunningham, welcome to the show. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that, uh, Mr. Cunningham, do you feel that uh, the Supreme Court is encouraging de facto segregation by indeed uh, promoting de jure integration? I don't know. You don't? Well, then, would you say, uh, uh, Mr. Cunningham, that uh, this, this post hoc ergo propter hoc has, uh, has resulted in a quasi populist backlash? which has indeed uh, uh, become sort of a punica fides of the suburbs. Mm. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. Cunningham, you're being a little evasive and obtuse. Let me put it to you this way. Uh, G.K. Chesterton uh, once adjured us that in order to strengthen our will, we must... Are you crying, Mr. Cunningham? You're crying, aren't you? Come on, you can't take a little polemical dialectic. That is not an argument, Mr. Cunningham. That is specious reasoning. I, I believe it's called uh, Argumentum Misericordium, which is an argument directed to the pity and the sentiments of the audience. However, Mr. Cunningham, I don't think that the audience is going to fall for that particular fallacious argument. Right, cry baby? What's the matter? Can't take it, can you? Mm. I beat you on that one, didn't I? Four points to your none. You're rather bleak tonight. Mm. You're rather stupid, too. I guess I, 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 uh, I, I took you on four dialectic points. And what did you do? You put, why don't you drink the milk and try some more? For the first time... A to the decorations. Oh, it's gonna be one heck of a party, huh, Alice? Come here, girl. Boy, thanks for helping me with the dip. I really appreciate it. I didn't have time. Well, I better get out of these shoes and get into my slippers. Get ready. Why don't you get my slippers, Alice? I think they're in the bedroom. That's it, my slippers. I think they're in the bedroom. <laughs> Oh, you're right, Alice. I don't have any slippers. Good dog. That must be a reminder to get some. Well, I better move this furniture around, get ready for the party. We're going to need lots of room for dancing. Ah, let's see. I guess I'll start with this bureau over here. Get... Oh! Alice! Alice, come here. Come here. Come here, Alice. Listen, I think my legs are broken. Why don't you run over and get Sarah, okay? Tell her to hurry. Oh, you know where she lives. She's... Just get Sarah. You don't understand, Alice. Oh, oh Alice, I know. You're right. You're right. Sarah would never be able to lift this. You just saved her an unnecessary trip. <laughs> Tom, is that you? Anyone home? Say, Bill, what happened? I think my legs are broken. Say, that's too bad. Uh, Say, you didn't happen to deposit the office payroll, did you? Uh, no, I didn't get a chance. I... Still in my coat pocket. In your coat pocket? Oh, my I legs. I think I'll just help myself, if you know what I mean. Tom, have you got a name? Oh, shut up, you fool. I've always hated you. Now I've got the box. Alice, attack! Attack! Say, 
Tech. Keep that dog from looking at me. Uh, uh, it's scaring me to death. Here, take your money. Uh, I don't need it. Just don't let that dog stare at me anymore. Attack, uh, Alice. Why, I'm going. Just keep that dog from looking at me. Oh, that's the scariest looking dog I've ever seen. Help! Police arrest me on the floor! Uh, it's a long story, sir. Help get this chest off my legs. No, not that chest. This chest. Oh, oh Biff. Oh. Oh. Biff, how did it happen? Uh, 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 yes, yes, so Alice, Sarah. All right. It's a long story. Oh, Sarah, I would have been a goner if it hadn't been for Alice. The wonder dog. It's time to play Dialing for Dollars, the money movie quiz where you get a chance to win big cash prizes. And now, here's the host of Dialing for Dollars, Mo Green. A very pleasant good afternoon to all of you. I'm Mo Green, and a very exciting afternoon it is because our cash jackpot is up to $2,400. Wow. Well, it's a record jackpot here on Dialing for Dollars. It's never been that high before, and we're dying to give it away to one of our lucky viewers. Well, let's get right to today's movie. Remember, if I call you, all you have to do is tell me the name of today's movie, answer a simple information question, and you're our big winner. Okay, the movie today is Changing Partners with Bruce Big and the lovely Trish Nutley. Stay tuned, I may be calling you. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Nelson. I've got those groceries you ordered. Hi, Bob. Why don't you come in? Well, thanks anyway, Mrs. Nelson, but, well, I've got deliveries to make. Bob, I'm sorry, but I, I won't be able to pay you today. But you're three weeks behind as it is, Mrs. Nelson. Well, maybe there's some... Gee, I, I don't know what you mean. Let me show you. That's a nice belt you're wearing. Oh, hello. Did you ever feel there just wasn't enough time to say all those things you'd really like to say? How about those business lunches when you only have 45 minutes to set up a very important deal? Or did you ever want to learn to speak faster to cut down on long-distance telephone bills? Well, time is money, but now talk is cheap with the new Evelyn Wood Speed Talking School. Yes, we'll teach you to speak faster than you've ever dreamed possible. I can talk over 60 words a minute. When you like to speak as fast, I can be guaranteed we cut down on it's harder than <laughs> And fun at parties, too. And good news, right now we're working on the Evelyn Wood Speed Thinking School. But don't worry, until we do, you'll be speaking so fast, no one will know whether or not you had time to think. <laughs> Right okay, our first call this afternoon is going to Mrs. Nancy Diptrick in Mellonville. Uh, so she doesn't seem to be home. Too bad, Nancy. You may have been our lucky winner. Well, that's too bad. I don't think we have time for another call. What? We do have time for another call? Okay. I'll be calling now Mr. Francis Letton in Centerville. Sure hope he's home. I don't think he's home. He's not answering his phone. Well, that's too bad, Mr. Letton. You might have been our big winner. If any of your friends... Have... Hi, Mo. I know the name of the movie. It's... it's Sorry, it's, wrong it's... number. <laughs> Some sort of mix-up there. Well, let's get back to the movie. Stay tuned. Remember, $2,400 in that jackpot. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Nelson. You have a lot of mail today. I thought I would deliver it myself. Uh, hi, Mike. Why don't you come in? Well, I... I don't think so. I have a lot of mail to deliver yet. Oh, Mike. Hmm? I'm afraid I won't be able to pay you today. Uh, the mail is free. Well, maybe there's some... other way I can pay you. Gee, that's a nice belt you're wearing. Nice little chain. 
I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonbear. And we'd like to invite you to join us later tonight for the premiere of 15 Minutes, SCTV's dynamic news magazine of the air. Floyd and I have circled the globe to provide you with in-depth coverage of the most fascinating and important issues of our time. I'll be telling you about my two-week stay in Nassau in the Bahamas and a fantastic look at millionaires and their fabulous lifestyles. Then it's ten revealing days in a scummy prison. Ten days locked up in a maximum security cell gave me a look at solitary confinement that you you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's horrendous. You got raped there, didn't you? <laughs> then on a lighter note, you'll travel with me to New Orleans, Louisiana for an exciting first-person account of the most unusual pleasure palace in the entire world. Now, this place is a combination gourmet restaurant and bordello. I spent three days there, and I'm sure you'll enjoy this story as much as I enjoyed doing it. Earl? Then you'll travel with me to uh, Dingle, New Jersey, for a look at the most up-to-date facility for the treatment of stomach worms in dogs. Join us for these and other exciting stories tonight on 15 Minutes. Elvis, the most dying... I'm calling on Mr. Cleveland Prince right here in the city. We seem to be having some trouble getting a hookup. The hang up? Okay, I'll wait. Doesn't seem to be home. Well, that's too bad. Mr. Prince might have been our $2,400 winner if he'd just been home. Hello? Mr. Cleveland Prince? My daddy's not home. <laughs> well, uh, this must be Mr. Prince Jr. What's your name, son? Don't go and walks with strangers. Ah, well, this isn't a stranger. This is Mo Green on Dialing for Dollars. Uh, are you watching today's money movie, little boy? No. Oh, I didn't think you were. Well, tell your daddy that if he could have told me the name of today's movie... Changing Partners. How did you know that? Smart little guy. Uh, well, ask listen. me the question. You've seen the show before, huh? Okay. Well, uh, okay, are you there by yourself? Yeah. Uh, is anyone there to help you with the question? No. Good. Okay, listen. In 1833, Edgar Allan Poe wrote the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym in which the fictitious adventurer Pym and his companion Peters met some black islanders who were exiles from what fictitious interplanetary state? What? Oh, I'm sorry, that was Simnosia. Gee, that was close. Too bad. The jackpot's up to $2,410. So please, stay tuned tomorrow for more Dialing for Dollars. Remember, this is Mo Green saying, I may be calling you. Happy movie watching. West Palm Beach, Florida. Reg Miller, weekdays on Eyewitness 12 News. This is Harold Ramis speaking for the man.